Hi, it's Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser, and this is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I hope you have your objects ready. I don't know what's coming. I never do, but I'll give you your, my expert answers to all of your questions, and I'll look at some objects for appraisal as well. So let's see where you are. Here's my first guest. Hi, what's your first name and where are you calling from? Hi, my name's Judy, and I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Hi, Judy. Where are you in Pennsylvania? Are you on the west side of the state or the east side of the state? I'm not far from where you are. I'm in Huntington. You don't know where I am, Judy. You have no idea where I am. <laughs> Everybody thinks they know what I'm doing, but they don't. Okay. I had some guy the other day who was telling me how many staff members I have. Totally wrong, but he knew. So <laughs> okay. anyway, what do you want to show me, Judy? <laughs> yeah, that's um, nice. How'd you acquire that? I found it at a thrift store. Look at that chair you're in. Look how big the back of that chair is. Wow. <laughs> is that chair comfy? Yes. It looks comfy. Like you can like go way, way back like this, right? You yes. All the way back. Really? <laughs> nice. So what show me the bottom of this piece. I'm not crazy about this piece. I think this is just ugly. <laughs> so <laughs> really? what, made, what made you like it? What made you pick it? It's I thought it was interesting. What's it's interesting rather, about it? It's rather heavy. Yeah. And it's dirty. Yeah. And it has a signature in there. So heavy and dirty. All right. Like a mound of, uh, it has a signature. That's a marking, but not okay. necessarily a signature. Okay. Now, um, material, the bottom is attached to the actual piece, correct? Yes. Ah, oh, that's too bad. All right. <laughs> I don't like, well, I don't like that because that indicates a low quality piece. You know, when they have to attach the pieces, that's not always very good. Your particular piece does not look hand carved. Your piece looks molded. So molded is going to be less valuable than hand carved. This piece dates to the middle years of the 20th century. It's from Asia. I would say value on that piece anywhere between 40 and $45. Thanks. Thank you. All my values are based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. Not when you go and you look and you say, they're selling for this much. It's how much they actually sold for when someone made an exchange, a transaction, when somebody actually paid money in some way to get an object. A lot of you will say, I see them selling on, fill in the blank, for this much or that much. But I'm going to tell you what you've got and what it's really worth. Judy knows what I mean when I say I think it's ugly. Ugly sometimes is your first clue to value and other times, not so great. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi. You're in front of a green screen there. Usually I only see that when I'm on TV with the weather with the weather casters, right? With the with the meteorologists. So what's the big green behind you? Well, I do online classes. So Okay, so green I use virtual important. backgrounds for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Okay. What do you teach? I teach storytelling through Lego. Oh, that's also, nice. That's interesting. That's not your typical class like calculus. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, that's cool. Do you have a lot of classes? Do you have a lot of, have a lot of students? Everything has gone virtual and gone very, very nicely. Well, that's great. Good for you. All right. What's your first name, hon? Amaya. Amaya. Amaya, nice to see you. So tell me what you've got for me to look at. I is have, it Legos? Uh, Maybe it's Legos. <laughs> No, it is not Lego this time, and I might bring you some eventually, but this time I have a 14 karat gold necklace I'd like you to take a look at. Sure. Is it marked 14K? It is. All right. And we'll see if we can get it up there. It's actually a Masonic piece. It's a fob that opens up, and it has a 32 on the front. So you know that the, with the Freemasons, the 32nd, is extremely important to achieve the 32nd. That's an important aspect in the whole uh, culture of the Freemasons or the right. Masonic culture. So you know that. So that piece is 14 karat gold. And oftentimes you'll see these pieces which are presented to members. And of course the Freemasons have a very long and, and varied history. I have a lot of information on my website, uh, drlaurieV.com uh, on the research pages about of course Masonic pieces, jewelry, collectibles, and such. And I've appraised a lot of them over the years. Um, is it attached to that chain or is that chain independent of the actual pendant? The chain is independent. Okay. And how'd you acquire the piece? I found it in a jewelry bag, which I don't normally do. I normally choose pieces piece by piece. 
Okay, so you bought one of the jewelry jars or a bag of jewelry for a particular price, one price. Yeah. How much was that? That was $30. Okay, do you think somebody didn't recognize that there was gold in there and they just didn't look at the mark? Because 14 k is pretty typical. It was tangled up with another piece of 14 k oh. that I okay. think is Victorian. So they got sick of the whole thing and they didn't want to undo it and they just figured, okay, I'm going to throw it in there and I can't untangle it. Well, that was yeah. good. You got it untangled. The piece of, if you could show it to the camera one more time so folks can see it, because I don't know how well they were able to see it. I was able to see it because it's pretty a pretty typical recognizable piece. Yeah. So value on that piece is going to be, and basically it's about the weight of the it's about the weight of the gold, and it's also about the fineness of the gold. So we know it's 14 carat, which is nice. I would say value on, and it has the very typical symbol of the Freemasons uh, with the compass and such. Value on that piece is going to be just about $250 for a small piece of gold like that. Good for you. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Dr. Enjoy Larry. Enjoy it. Enjoy You're it. such a Take wonderful care. teacher. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I hope that your classes continue to be successful and that you are too when you're looking at those jewelry bags. So lots of stuff in those Goodwill jewelry bags and jewelry jars and at yard sales, you know, the yard sale lot of jewelry. You know, you take the jewelry, you see it all and you just buy all of it and see what you got once you get home. A lot of people do that. So nice to have you with me. Thank you, Maya. And thanks for, of course, being my guest here tonight. Here's another guest. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. So what have you liked most about this week viewing the channel? What's your first name? Tina. Okay, you've been watching the channel. What do you like best? Uh, everything. <laughs> everything about the channel? It's just fantastic all the way around? All the way around. All right. Well, that was an easy. I'm letting you off easy with that answer. Okay. <laughs> what have you got here? It looks like a still life of fruit. Yeah, I picked it up at the thrift store. It's, I don't know if it's just dirty or somebody was smoking. But um, it's oil on board. See it's oil on board? Yeah, it's a board. Can I see the back? Yeah. And it looks like it's been cut. It looks like it's been cut down to fit that frame. Do you see that from the other side? Yeah, because you can't see the... Well, it slides a little bit, but you still can't get the signature. In. Well, it's not only the signature. The composition is off on that side. If you look at that piece you'll notice that you've got a little bit more of the fabric on one side than you do on the other. So it's kind of off kilter. So they probably cut it to fit it into that frame. The other, the other situation with that is that frame is not usually used for a painting. That frame is usually used for another piece of glass, a mirror, or in fact, something else that's like a plaque or more sculptural. So that particular frame, while the painting fits in it, now that they cut it, that frame wasn't intended for that painting. So you have a marriage, you know, a marriage, the yeah. two dissimilar things come together, stick it out no matter what. That's a marriage. Well, <laughs> that piece is a marriage. It's not, it doesn't really go together. Um, the frame is kind of interesting, somewhat older. The frame probably dates to the latter part of the 19th century. The frame has a value. How big is the frame? Uh, is so, it 28 by 30? Is it yeah. 22? Yeah, 28 by 30. I would say the frame has a value of about $150. And the painting, which is probably European in origin, the painting has another value, just about $150. So I'd go $300 on it, but I don't think they're united well. All right. <laughs> That's based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. Why? You have to evaluate, experts like me have to evaluate, of course, the frame independent of the painting. And then a lot of you are telling me things, you know, comments and stuff about other channels and other folks. And, you know, you're on this group or that group. You know, I know everybody does a comparison, but you know, when you're doing source to source, when you're going to compare somebody like me to some of these groups, I really wish you would think about how much information I'm trying to give you and all the information and years that I've put in to make sure that you get the right answer. So there are a lot of folks out there who are going to say, oh no, you know, I don't agree with Dr. Lori. You don't have to agree with me, but you have to realize that a lot of information I'm giving. And for those of you who are getting kicked out of groups because you stuck up for me, I heard that this week too. The very odd week this week. So if that happened to you, I'm very sorry that that's happening. And I want you to question, why am I in groups where someone doesn't want to hear all the opinions and all the answers and doesn't want to hear from an expert? So I'm sorry that happened to you. And I hope, I hope, I hope that you will continue to stay here. I want you here. I don't want to kick anybody out. I want you here so you can learn, so you can, of course, succeed. So anyway, I hope you are here with me. I'll take my next guest if I have another one up. And I want to thank you very much. 
Um, I did a charity event. Yes. Thank you very much, Mick. And thank you very much for the super chats and the super stickers. I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate all of them. It does support the channel. It supports my staff, of course, for them to be able to provide for you high quality, um, well edited, and of course, pieces like this. We do this because of this, because you are supporting us with super stickers, super chats too, because of course, someone has to be running the techno, the technology side of things too. Can't do all of it. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? What's your first name, hon? Pam. Hi, Pam. So tell me what you've got here. I have no idea. It's an elf. Okay. You have no idea. Is there any mark on your elf? Did you take off the clothes? You took off the clothes. You found no markings. Because it's really sewn up. You can't really, there's nothing behind okay. like the head. You can't really take the clothes off. Okay. Well, typically the marks are going to be in a place where you can actually get to them from the clothes. So there are a couple of different makers of dolls like these. Basically, I hate to call them dolls because they're more sort of figural sculptures than they are really dolls. So it, it's a different, it's sort of a different level than dolls. You know, right. there's um, a couple of different ones. I remember at an event, I remember at an event, I think it was somewhere in Indiana. I kind of think it was Fort Wayne. I think it was a few years ago. There was a particular doll. You might have seen it, actually. And maybe you saw that um, convention hall event, that big you know, event with a big audience with me. And you said, wow, I have a doll that's similar. Um, how'd you acquire this one? At the thrift store. Did you? So you didn't see that event, that that video? Are you using the binge link? Do you guys know where the binge link is? I do, but I, I just started watching, so. Okay, well the binge link will help you to get some more information about different pieces, um, but there are specialty artists. Now, where are you? Because I don't I'm think that's the same type of doll. I'm in Maine. Okay, you're in Maine, all right. Mm -hmm. So I would say that this particular piece has a secondary market value, just about $150. And you said that all of the pieces are sewn on, hand sewn. I don't think it is. They are. Like, you can't get into the um, you can't, actual. Yeah, you can't get into underneath. You can see underneath the head, but you can't get into the doll. Okay. I would say 125 And the reason why I say that is a couple of things. They, they mirror dolls like the buyer's choice dolls. And I call them dolls, but they really are more sculptural figurines because they're actual artisans who are making these dolls and then dressing these dolls. And oftentimes the, the clothes are sewn right on. So okay. how much did you pay at the thrift store? I paid 40. What made you buy it? I just like him. You think he's cool? Yeah. If you were to resell them, do you know when to resell him? No. All right, Christmas. elves are going to sell better, or these little impish figures are going to sell better usually at holiday time. You know, right. if he was in his bathing suit, he'd probably sell better in the summer. Thanks so much, Pam. Thank you. Maine's so pretty. Maine's so pretty. Northern New England. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I hope it's nice of all of you to join me, and I hope that you are using the like button. I hope that you are using the binge link. I hope that you are also. Um, I hope that you are also signing up. Um, at, 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 of course, drlaurieb.com for my newsletter. Hi, what's your name? Uh, I'm Robert. How are Hi, you? Hi, Robert. Are you, a, are you a newsletter subscriber, Robert? No, I am not. Well, what are you doing here, Robert? Why would I want to talk to you if you're not subscribing to my newsletter, Robert? <laughs> I think my fiance is a subscriber. I hope you will. After this, I hope you'll subscribe. Okay, very good. How can I help you? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Northern Virginia. I really like the blue wall behind you. Oh, and you've got you. a couple of little pieces behind that look good too. That Those two little um, pictures behind you are cute too. What do you want yeah. to show me tonight? I'm showing you this bowl here. Well, that's nice. Can hold it up a little higher. Yeah, let's see. And back, yeah. sort of right in front of your face would be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's up a little uh, higher, please. And I can't okay. see the whole bottom. There we go. Now you got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll come back to your face in a minute. <laughs> Okay, very good. So it's hand painted, hand gilded. Yeah. All right. How'd you acquire it? A uh, thrift store. Nice, nice. No, no inclusions, cracks, scratches, no problems, right? No, it's in pretty good shape. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Is there a mark on the bottom? Uh, there is an A on the bottom. There's, There's a an A on the bottom. All right. Okay. So I see it there. Okay. So basically, what you have is you have a piece that's been 
exported into the United States and yeah. hand painted here. Now you got it as a thrift store, but it might have been someone's relative who painted it. You know, in the early 20th century, ladies would sit in their living rooms and they would paint their own pottery, if you will. The gilding is really quite nice. I'm sorry, Robert. My great grandmother would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a nice piece. Yours is rather large. Is it six inches in diameter? It's nine inches in diameter. Very good. Very nice. I like the way the interior is painted too. A lot of times the interior is not painted. Value on that piece, just about $90. Robert, thank you. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. <laughs> the newsletter, of course, is available at drlaurieb.com. And that's where you can find lots of information, including, of course, my specials and shop page. So don't miss that either. It's easy to find. You can go to your device. Maybe it's your smartphone and click on, of course, the specials and shop page, which is right after you click on the menu for, of course, um, the website. So don't miss it. There's lots of information there. It's where you can get things like the loop and also the treasure hunters toolkit, as well as, of course, the jewelry toolkit, which a lot of you are telling me that you like very much with that nice gem tester. Here's my next guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Heather calling from Canada. Hi, Heather. Nice to see you. How can I help? So I look have... very comfy. Everybody's oh, comfy you. tonight. They're like, okay, we're just hanging out with Dr. Lori tonight. <laughs> exactly. What have you got? So I have this. I'm going to show you. I was told it was an incunabula. Okay. Can we see all of it? Um, there you go. All right. So it's supposed to be from 1494. Really? 1494 on that paper? Supposed to be. Well, that paper doesn't look that old. Okay. That paper looks like the 1600s to me. So why do you think it's from 1494? That's what I was told. I got it off of By eBay whom? many, many years ago. By whom? Um, from I got I bought it on eBay many years ago. Okay. So the person who sold it to you told you that it was that? Yes. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things about that. You need to know your sources. So yes. I think the paper is a little bit younger. I'm not saying that it is that it is a particularly contemporary piece, not that young, but it's younger than the, than the 1400s. How much okay. did you pay for it many, many years ago on eBay? I think about $20. Okay. So do you think it increased in value now? Probably every not. Every time just, that I'm you're really... touching it with your oily hands, oh, every sorry. time. <laughs> I know. I mean, I wear the gloves not for my health. I know. <laughs> Try not to touch it, particularly paper. Okay. Paper is very, very susceptible to the oils on your hands, can be transferred to objects, attract dirt, and deteriorate them. Now, you probably don't handle it all that much. No. Where do you keep it when it's not here being presented on Ask Dr. Lori Live? I store it between uh, two pieces of cardboard. Cardboard. Okay. I know. Well, you're just hoping to ruin it, but you know, let's, you know, I'm sorry, Heather, that's the truth. So basically the cardboard will off gas. Okay. okay? So acid-free solander box would be good. Acid-free mat board would be good. Um, if you're not going to in fact, um, or tissue paper in an acid-free solander box, but two pieces of cardboard or even a manila folder, not very good for paper of that age. Okay. Value on it, about $40. Okay, so good. Not Thank too you. bad, not terrible for your twenty dollar invested investment. Not too bad. Thank you. But try to keep your hands off the paper. I always say that. Now, granted, you don't have to go walking around your house with gloves. I evaluate fifty thousand objects a year. You know, so you know when I'm touching that many objects, I've got to wear the gloves. And the gloves are, of course, as I've told you many times in museums, they're standard issue in museums. So as a museum professional, which is when you compare me to some of these other channels, I'm going, you're not comparing apples and apples. That happened to me, I suggested Dr. Lori, and I was blocked. I didn't know it wasn't allowed. Well, I don't know why it's not allowed. Something tells me you need to be on my channel and not there. But I don't know. I don't know why they're doing that. I do, you know, there are cer certain folks who, of course, like certain folks and don't like other folks. Um, but again, I always say that, um, basically that. So I will, I will tell you that in terms of it, I'm open to everybody and I want everybody to learn the same way. So the fact that some of these channels want to do things like that, I think I really could be helpful to many people. And I know so many of you are telling me that you're making money. I'm helping you up your game. I hear that all the time, that you're learning my tips and you're using my tips and going from there. Hi, from Aaron and Phoebe. You're the best. We love you. I love you very much. 
I love you both very much. Thank you for saying hello and thank you for being here tonight. It's nice to hear from some friends, some travel friends, fantastic travel friends there. So, and I hope to be back in Texas as soon as possible. Thank you for the super sticker too. Um, and I appreciate it when, you know, everybody, everybody comes on. Uh, Dr. Lori's next guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name, hon? My name is Josh from Indianapolis. Hi, Josh. How are things? Have you seen me in Indianapolis at my events there? I have not, but I plan what on checking in. What are you doing, in. Josh? What's happening? I'm new to it. I'm new to it. Oh, you're new to it? Okay. Well, I'm happy to have you, honey. So tell Thanks. me, how can I help you tonight? I got this in a coin lot. It's a 1958 Indy 500 medallion. Oh, well, that, that makes sense, right? So it's a 1958 Indy 500 medallion. That's wonderful. So can I see the other side? Does it indicate, does it indicate the fineness of the metal? It says SG and S-T-E-R for sterling, I presume. Okay. So it says it, probably the whole word sterling, and then over time it's it's basically rubbed off typically. So that's that's a wonderful piece. So first of all, let's talk about the sterling. The sterling is probably worth somewhere between 40 and 65 bucks but that's not really where all the value is. You have to think about the materials first. That particular piece is a medallion that you would see. Now, of course, you're going to get it in Indy. I'm not going to probably find it in, you know, Maine, like one of our earlier callers or callers or Canada or such. So value on that to the, of course, collectible Indy car market or the folks who are interested, of course, in racing and everybody's inter interested in racing. Did I ever tell you guys that I traveled with, of course, um, Linda and Richard Petty, he was a cool guy, really a cool guy. Yeah, and you know what we talked about? You're gonna laugh. He talked about French Impressionism. We were in Russia and he was a really cool guy and a smart guy and his wife was very, very lovely. And uh, I enjoyed my time with him, but he knew a lot about art. He surprised me, I didn't expect that. He's a cool guy, good old Richard Petty. Anyway, I digress. Um, having said that, that particular piece that you've got has a market value, just about $200. The sterling is part of it, but most of the value is in, of course, the connection to, of course, uh, race car collectors. So good for you, good for you. Nice, thank you, race, thank you. I should say NASCAR racing collectors. So thanks so much, nice to see you. My regards to Indianapolis. And these are the kinds of things that you're gonna find in these places. Now, what I should have really mentioned to, to him was, you know, if you're trying to sell it, I want you to get out of the Indianapolis area because you know what? A lot of those collectibles are going to be there. He's got to open that up to a global market. He'll probably, in fact, get more money out of it. I was giving another tip today. If you haven't been watching my YouTube stories, check out my YouTube stories. Of course, I do those as well. Um, and the YouTube story I was talking about was, you know, think about when you're going to sell something. I was appraising some pieces and I said, you know, I want you to sell this around a holiday and I want you to start marketing it about two weeks before that holiday. So if you're trying to sell something related to uh, maybe it's Hanukkah or Christmas or maybe it's Halloween or something, I want you to start that marketing initiative about two weeks before the holiday so you're riding that press wave. Anyway, good to see you. Here's my next guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you doing? A lot of blue walls tonight. This is the third blue wall I saw. Expert answers to all your questions about art, antiques, oh, and collectibles. What's your first name? Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's your first name, hon? I'm Renee in Los Hi. Angeles. Hi, Renee. How are things in LA? Everything's beautiful. It was a gorgeous day. Wonderful. I'm glad you had a gorgeous I have, day. I like I your salon style wall. Her wall behind her is called salon style. And that's basically the way in which paintings would be displayed in the French salon. And the French salon, of course, in the late 19th century was where all the experts, all of the art critics would look at everybody's paintings and they just put them up on the wall, one next to another, as many as they could fit. So they could actually do that. So they could actually assess, of course, the paintings. And it looks beautiful. Salon walls, I think Thank look you. great. Not the whole house in salon walls, but one like statement wall, I think is really cool. Are you an interior decorator, Renee? Not at all, not well, you've at got, all. You've got quite an eye behind you, that's nice. What have I got, what have you got here you want me to take a look at tonight? Thank you, I have this little piece of pottery I found at a swap meet okay. in now, Los what's Angeles. The when you say, okay, so, you know, Californians always say, I was at a swap meet. New Englanders will talk about estate sales. So you were at a swap meet outside, is that what it is? Uh, yeah, it's a flea market, I don't know what they- Yeah, 
Yeah, flea markets, typically that kind of thing. So thank you very much for the super chats and the super stickers. Oh. Keep them coming. It supports this channel. So tell me a little bit about this. I like this. I like it, the I don't know. I feel like it's, it's 10 inches tall. Okay. It has an impressed mark on the bottom. Uh, I could never make it out. It's so tiny. It's pretty tiny. It's a little bit hard with your lighting. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So can I see the side? Can I see one of the Im the image of the actual piece? Can you bring the piece a little closer? Yes. I want to see the blue portion so I can see how the, the pigment is done. And I sort of I think just don't move it all. Don't twirl, twirl, twirl. Let me look a minute. Okay. Let the camera focus. Okay. All the video callers are saying that to me. Oh, I have to wait, Dr. Lori. I have to wait. Yeah, you have to just be a little bit patient. Eh. All yeah. right. So I would put this piece anytime between 1950 and 1965. I would say that piece probably is native to California. And I would say oh. value on that piece easily 75 bucks. I like that. Ceramics based on actual sales records. Thank you very much, Renee. Based on Thank actual you. sales records where similar pieces have sold. The other thing that you have to look for is you have to look for what are the color schemes that are popular now, right? We had a time about five years ago when everything was brown and blue, brown and blue, brown and blue and beige. Now everything's gray gray and monochromatic colors and this kind of thing in all of design. So you start to see where certain sort of um, trends happen. And they happen, of course, based on color, based on style. I also like the way in which it was a nice columnar kind of piece. It wasn't too bulbous. It was kind of nice and slender. That was a nice piece. Oh, I forgot. I should have asked her how much she paid at the swap meet. So thanks very much, Renee. Maybe if you're still on, you can type that in and tell us how much you paid at the swap meet. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi. How are um, you this, today? I'm fine. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. How are you? I'm good. I'm Judy, and I live in Virginia Beach. Thank you for being with me, Judy. And Lori, thank you for the super sticker. Yes. What, what, I, have, got, honey? what I have for you is this jug. It's a small jug. Um, when I bought it, it was completely covered in dirt. You couldn't even see the color that you see right now. Isn't that cool when that happens? Yeah, so you got it. It's completely covered in dirt, and you decide I'm going to do some work on this, and I'm going to I'm going to have something gorgeous emerge. Exactly. Beautiful glaze ceramic. I like the form a lot. I like the form. It's a very traditionally Southern style form. Is there a mark on the bottom? There is, and I can't make it out. And I bought it because of the mark. Let's see. Let's see if you can get the mark. Okay, let's turn it this way. Okay. All right, there we are. Yeah, it's difficult to make out the mark. And all of you, if you have these questions, you can always, of course, send a picture to Dr. Lori. I can kind of try to spell it. If they open up the page more so I can Yeah, see so what do you think it's spelled? How do you think it's spelled, hon? Um, could be a lot. Of could be your camera. T-H, maybe a W, A, and it has that little scriggly thing at the bottom there. It has a lot going on. It has a lot going on there. Yeah. Here's a couple of things. I want you to look at the form first. I want you to send me a picture of the um, underside, right? So you can do that at drlaurieV.com. You can all do that at drlaurieV.com if, of course, you're not one of the um, lucky ones who's here to, of course, be part of this tonight. Um, and that's, it'll say find values, click on that and then click on send a photo. But I like the form a lot. And the form is something that tells me the piece of course is late 20th century, uh, mainly because of the way in which that signature is done. It's stoneware ceramic. So that's different from, of course, earthenware ceramic and porcelain mm -hmm. and such. The glaze is really quite beautiful. You can see that it is a professional studio potter and value on the piece about $75. Okay. Nice. These and are the kinds of things that you see. In fact, speaking of thrifting, um, <laughs> I'm going to be thrifting on, of course, uh, my next video. So if you want to go thrifting with Dr. Lori, you've been thrifting with me and this person and that person, thrift with Dr. Lori. And I'm going to be doing that, of course, at the Silver Penny. And you can watch that video. Um, it's going to premiere tomorrow at 5 p.m. Do not miss it. I'm going to show you what I look for when I'm thrift store shopping. You won't want to miss that. Um, so that's tomorrow. We'll premiere it, of course, at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and I'll be there for the live premiere as well. So join me tonight. My guests are joining me. Remember, I don't know what's coming. Nothing is vetted. I don't know what these objects are. Nothing is um, 
actually shown prior, like, you know, shows like Antiques Roadshow. They know what's coming before they put it on film. So you, I see that I'm on your TV. How are you? And what do you want to show me, hon? Hi. My Hi. name is Chris. I'm calling from California. Nice Los to Angeles. see you. And I have, let me see if I can get it in the shot for you. This nice. piece of pottery. It's a, That's nice. I like the colors. You like, did you buy it for the colors? I did. I okay. did. And um, I, and I like the the type of art on it. Um, I got it at um, Goodwill. It reminds me of Marimekko. You I'm know, sorry, Marimek what? it reminds me of Marimekko. Marimekko, okay. it's not Marimekko, but I would say it reminds me of Marimekko, those nice sort of Finnish Scandinavian design pieces. You see it with the pocketbooks and such. Uh, right. Jackie Kennedy, of course, wore those dresses, very bright colors and such. So is there a mark on the bottom of that? There is. I'll show it to you. Gosh, it's hard to. Yeah, you're not near the camera. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. loggers. Good. Great, 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 great. So you got a nice piece. I would say that particular piece, is it 12 inches? Yeah, it's about 14. Oh, it's about 14. So cylindrical. So you can put that down on the hearth. You can put that down on the floor type of thing. I think that's really quite fine. It can also be at the end of a buffet table. Pretty big, though, for those larger flowers. I would say value on that easily, easily $95. I like Ooh, that a lot. The bright colors are going to do it. That's true in glass. That's true in ceramic. The bright colors, always based on actual sales records. That one's nice. And I would think most people are looking at that. Thanks so much. Thank I think you. most people are looking at that. And when they're making a decision, they're making a decision on taste. So remember, you want to think about what most people are going to like when it comes to taste. So think about that as well. That's an important aspect of all of this. So that particular piece is also quite indicative of what we typically see latter part of the 20th century. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your question? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, um, what's your name? Janice. Hi, Janice. I have a couple pictures here. How'd you acquire that, Janice? Now, that, that actually looks like it's an original, Janice. Yes, I have two of them. I got them at a yard sale. Let's for... just do one. Let's do okay. one so everybody can see the one piece. We can focus on one thing. You bought it at a yard sale. All right. For, for $2. All right. And it says Jay Gould and Richard. Yes. Dell at uh, Lithograph. And then yeah. on the other side, it says Walter Imp. Okay. So uh, they're IMP, beautiful. IMP means it's been impressed. That's the person who imprinted it. Okay. Right? And I want right. to make a point about a lot of different um, marks. A lot of different marks can mean different things. So for example, um, 14KP, there are certain manufacturers that use that P not for plum, which is the common one, but for plated. So people are saying, oh no, it's only one thing. Not always only one answer. So when you have okay. the broad expertise that I have, I like to focus on all of the possible answers. So 14KP is usually 14K plum, which means it's exact, but it also, of course, can mean P-plated. Some people, some manufacturers and some studio um, jewelry designers will use that in that way. So that's not the typical. That's the one that, you know, when you see as many objects as I see, I can give you some of the information others can't. This piece says, of course, DEL, which usually means delineate or basically someone did one portion of it and then somebody else did the printing portion. So two people are actually working on this. This particular okay. piece does look like a very, very bright. It does look like an original work of art, but we know from those marks that it is indeed a print. And okay. this piece has a secondary market value, just about $55. What'd you pay at the yard sale? $2. $2 is great. People yes. sometimes with prints just want to get rid of things and they go, okay, $2. And then, you know, you can make that look good with an acid-free mat and a nice frame. And it can really do something in your home. A lot of people collect bird prints. They are a very popular market on some of the online auction and online sales sites. People are surprised by that. Thank you, Lisa. Um, some people are surprised by that, but certain animals do have, in fact, have um, that. Well, Jeffrey, if your wife loves Tanzanite, go buy her something because she's probably a lovely person and she deserves a gift. <laughs> That's what I have to say to Jeffrey. If you know what she likes, it wouldn't kill you to buy her something. Having said that, um, but but birds and certain animals, uh, you'd be surprised at how many people say, oh, Dr. Lori, I have a collection of owls. I have a collection of this or that. And people do like to collect within categories of animals or of, of course, 
um, you know, flora, fauna, fowl, that kind of thing. So thanks for that. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. This is the opportunity, a unique opportunity for me to, in fact, of course, appraise your objects. I was talking to some television executives last week who said, I can't believe you do this. You know exactly what you're doing. It's so much fun. I couldn't stop watching. And you know why? Because my guests are so much fun and I have so much fun doing it. Hi, what's your first name, sweetie? Arlisha. Hi, Arlisha. Hi, Arlisha. It's nice to see you. Are things going well for you in California? Yes. It's a you lovely got a day. Very, you've got a pretty, uh, it's a pretty landscape behind you. That's a pretty landscape that the oranges and the yellow and the yellows, that's pretty. Did you take that picture? No, I did not. Actually, it's a print. It's nice. A holy yeah, it's a nice one. I like it. So let's, let's talk about this bowl since it's right in front of your pretty face. Show me this. <laughs> that's transferware, babe. That's a piece yes. of transferware. The, one of the ways you can tell transferware is if you see the background that they painted the background to. Remember, transferware, that image is transferred onto the bowl. And then yes. it looks like it's um, a ceramic, like a semi-vitreous porcelain ceramic. It looks like there's a mark, but I can't see it with the reflection. Germany. It says just Germany, just the word Germany in a circle. Yeah. With okay. the, yes. That, that piece dates to just about a hundred years ago. It probably is just on the line of being an antique. Remember a hundred years or older, it's an antique. That piece probably dates just about 1920, 1925. And value on that piece, is it eight inches, nine inches across? Nine. Nine inches across. I'd say value on that piece, about $40. It's nice. Nice big bowl, nice. no chips, no cracks. It's a good one and made, of course, in Germany and marked as such. Has to be marked if it's imported into the United States. Nice to see you, hon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So lots going on, lots of people thrifting, and you can thrift with me too. And I want to show you what an expert looks like, looks for when she's going thrifting and shopping. I love to shop. Can't wait for our video call in June. Oh, Judy, yeah, we're doing a lot of video calls. June's right around the corner too, right? June's always around the corner. So we're basically going to see a lot of folks. I've got lots of video calls and lots of openings for your video calls too. So if you have questions and you want to have a, a personal call with me, you know, you don't want to do it in this environment, that's fine. You can always book a video call. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Kat and I'm calling from Glenwood, Minnesota. Hi, Kat. How are you? I think I have to say that, you know, places like Michigan and Minnesota are just beautiful uh, this time of year, all times of year, actually. <laughs> How are you doing? What can I look at for you? I'm doing great. And you can look at a, a lamp that has been in my family for quite a while. Um, it That's is nice. one that I got from my mother when she passed away just recently. And I'm so sorry that you lost your mom. I'm sorry you lost your mom's never easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was really hard. And she got it from her parents. Nice. Um, handed down. Actually, nice. this is but this was my mom, and that yeah. was her mom. Oh and nice. So this lights up. Both sides. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Nice. And it's and it's got the scene. This lifts up off the top. Careful, careful, go like easy, careful. Oh. You're making me crazy when you do that. Two hands when you do that. <laughs> I can't. I can't hold the computer in two hands. I know, but you, know, you don't want to ruin the lamp. Okay. Anyway. So, so okay. It's it's very very heavy. Yes. There's there's no markings on it. It's it's green. So I'm not sure if it's. I think it's copper, but I'm not positive. And and there's no markings. Okay. So Did you look on. You look for. You saw no markings on the underside too. Like you picked up the lamp and you looked underneath. Nothing there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a couple of different things. Weight is typically, so copper and copper is one of those strong materials, right? So it's usually, you know, silver over copper, or, you know, this kind of thing. So that piece might have a greenish kind of verdigris kind of it's called verdigris. And basically it is a, um, it is a patination. It also deteriorates to that color. So that's pretty okay. typical of a base metal like copper. Now, yours is, I think, patinated in that green color to sort of look like um, the base and then the base and the, and the cap at the top actually are matching. Now, the beauty and the value in your lamp, most of those lamps, 150 bucks, but the beauty and the value in your lamp is in that absolutely detailed, wonderfully executed painting of the landscape, okay? Now, 
I'm going to tell you, you're going to choose. I know you're trying to show it to me to keep turning it. You're going to choose in your home, I hope, one plate, one way that you want that to sit. And I want it to sit like yep. that. I don't yeah, want you to be always like scrolling. that. Yeah, right. it, that's okay. how it always sits. Okay. And then once every, I'm going to say once every three months, give it one quarter turn. Okay. Okay. And the okay. one quarter turn is because the sun is coming in in a certain way, right? And you don't yeah. want to have one area get more faded than the other. So every three months, I want you to quarter turn that. So you don't have the same, if you keep it in the same spot, you don't want the same sun to hit it the same way and fade it. Okay. Okay. Because it's different from having a painting, right? It's a painting, but it's on glass. So the fact that it's on glass, it deteriorates differently than if it is on canvas. And that's what expertise looks like, kids. Value okay. on your piece, about $300. It's beautiful. Made in the United States, probably made in New Bedford, Massachusetts. It looks like a pear point style lamp. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. Right. And it's nice right there next to mom and grandma. <laughs> So a lot of these things, of course, I'm sorry, my hair is itchy. Um, a lot of these things, of course, are going to spark memories. It's wonderful that these objects are being preserved. It's wonderful that you guys are saving and rescuing them. The same way I think it's wonderful that you're rescuing pets. It's terrific that you're rescuing, of course, these pieces too. Thank you very much for the super chats and the super stickers. Thank you for your support. I appreciate that. Who do I recommend getting when one travels to um, NOLA. So if you're going to New Orleans, you know, souvenir wise, I did a, a, a video that was a lot of fun to do about, of course, souvenir shopping. So if you're wondering what you should get, I always say if you're there for, of course, Mardi Gras, get everybody's beads. I love the beads of Mardi Gras. But if you're in New Orleans, I want you to think about anything that relates to its wonderful French heritage. And I want you to also think about with respect to New Orleans, probably a souvenir of Jackson Square, something from of course, Jackson Square is always fun. I try to keep something uh, from all of my travels and I hope that you will think about traveling, um, of course, uh, because you're gonna learn so much when you open up the world to, of course, not only your interest in collecting, but also in shopping. Uh, the other thing about uh, New Orleans, I would say, is make sure that you bring home something that has to do with, you know, jazz. Go to a jazz club and, you know, get a coaster from one of the bars, one of the jazz clubs, and don't miss all the wonderful music when you get to New Orleans. That's what I remember. Uh, anyway, uh, Pear Point Lamp, did she say the value? I said Pear Point, not Pear Point. P-A-R-P-O-I-N-T is what I said, Carla. And I did say the value. And you can rewatch if you want to rewatch. Um, but basically about $300 for them. And Pear Point Lamps come in all different types. So some of them are those nice painted ones like you see there. Some of them are reverse glass. Some of them are just slag glass. They're just sort of a metal cage kind of thing with a decoration. And the slag glass sits in, in part. Um, some of them are also the puffy pear point lamps, which are actually sort of a form of the glass. So they look like flowers of a particular form in 3D. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Hello. Dr. Lori Live. What's Hi. your first name? Marco. Hi, From Marco. How, how are you, Marco? Yeah, fine, fine. You? I'm fine, fine. Look at yeah. all the books, Marco. Have you been yeah, reading? Yeah, the books here. Yeah, I read a lot. Yeah. Oh, reading yeah. is wonderful. I'm glad you read a lot. It's nice yeah. to see you, hon. Nice to see you. Where are you calling this, from? Can you remind me? From Italy. All the way from Italy. Oh, yeah. Buongiorno, Marco. Yeah, near Venice. Yeah. You're, are you in Venice? Near Venice. Uh, Marco, you're killing me. I love Venice. Yeah, I know. I, I know. Love I'm Venice. watching you. I'm a Marco, big fan. Marco, you walk in and all the gold. I love all the yeah, gold. Yeah, yeah. I'm at between 50 kilometers from Venice. Yeah. Oh, I, well, I miss you. And when I'm in Venice, I'm calling you and we're going to... We're okay. Going to yeah. we'll have, I'll take you yeah, to be nice. Yeah. All right, darling. Tell yeah, me, you're this... up late. You're up very late. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. I love I was this. making your show. That's why. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're sweet, Marco. Yeah. Marco, honey, this is beautiful. I like this. I have this vase here. I bought this for three euros wow. <laughs> at the thrift store. Did you really? And it has this mark. Marco, get closer. I can't see the mark. <laughs> Oh, I like that, Marco. <laughs> I yeah. like that a lot. Yeah, it's decorating by hand. Something like that it's written. Um, decorate. It's decoration. 
Yeah. The translation is decorated by hand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think your piece is English. It's and I English. Think, I think your piece is English. And yeah. I think the design is definitely English. Yeah, I, I think, think it was Japanese or Chinese. But no, 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 no. I think the des the design is Japanese. Definitely, yeah. the design is Japanese. But yeah. that form, that piece yeah. is English. I think yeah. that's in the manner of yes. Minton. And look how thin that is. That's British. That's English. Yeah. Yeah. And so value cool. value on that piece, I would go anywhere between four hundred and twenty five and four hundred and fifty dollars oh, in a wow. good market. Now, right now, not the best of markets. Yeah. There's not as much money in the market now because of the pandemic. But I would say about four hundred dollars retail U.S. Oh. Now you got to do it into your euros for yourself. Right. Right. But right, for three dollars, right. can you hold on to it for maybe six months, eight months? Yes, actually, I want to keep this. I don't. Want I would to keep that. This. I like yeah. that very well. Yeah, I, I like it. It's there nice. in my house. So the couple of things that I like a lot. I like the garlands. Oh, time yeah. period. I like the garlands. Yeah. I also like the banding. It's not too thick, and I like the curve here. Up yeah. and then the flare. I like yeah, that yeah, form. Yeah. It's because, a lot about the form, Marco. Right, and then, right. of course, the porcelain is beautiful and it is obviously hand painted. Yeah. Um, so they're going to do an outline like a cartoon, like the yeah. Italians, of course, like the Italians would do a cartoon first. The Italians, like Michelangelo or Raphael, they write a cartoon first, uh, an outline on the wall before they do right, the fresco. Right. They're going to do a cartoon first and then they're going to go back and hand paint it. I like One that. Question. There is like a little bubble. Is it normal? Sometimes. Bubbles are usually a glaze skip. So ah, okay. that means that the glaze has skipped when they're actually in the process, in the firing process. That might be why someone decided, oh, I don't like it. I mean, it is, in fact, it has to do with, uh, not condition, it has to do with the process. I see. When you see a glaze skip. So sometimes you can see not all shiny, right? Yeah. So it's not all shiny. You see a glaze skip. Sometimes right. the bubbles actually happen when it's starting to anneal or when it's in the in the kiln being fired. Oh, so it's English. I think it's English. Yeah. Oh, if it says okay. it says hand decorated on it in that kind yeah, of form. Yeah, you're right. It's decoration. Um, hand painted. Hand painted. Yeah, it's British. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. it's looking. And of course, the many of the firms in uh, Great Britain are doing these kinds of things that look, of course, like. That look, of course, like that Asian style. Minton's is the one that's most. Okay, but, that what doesn't have a, but that what doesn't age? have a mint. But that doesn't have a Minton's mark. Oh, I so. see. Yeah. Okay. And what age again? Probably 1895 to about 1905, 1910. Ah, okay. So 100 years more than. Okay. More than 100 years. More than years. Yeah, okay. Definitely Thank an antique. You. Very good for three euros. Keep yeah. Going to the thrift store, and if you want to watch me go to the thrift store. My video about the thrift store, of course, is coming up this weekend. Yeah. It premieres tomorrow. I know. I'm waiting. Thank you, Marco. Thank you. Good night, bye, darling. Bye. Oh, Venice. I love Italy. Oh, I miss Italy. I was supposed to be there this year, but, well, things change. You know, things change. <laughs> anyway, I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Thank you to my guests. And thanks for all the super chats and super stickers. I appreciate that, too. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, honey. It's, What's your uh, first name? It, it's Angel from uh, Ontario, Canada. Angel, what did you learn from the channel this week? You're binge watching or you're watching things. What was the thing I taught you that you said, oh, I didn't know that? Was it about jewelry? Was it about ceramics? Was it about glass? What was it about? It was about the jewelry. And okay. then I was also listening when you said that cigarette cases, when they're thin, is the older ones, right? Usually because the, the thin ones are older. Yeah, because the cigarettes were thin, so I bought this. Yeah. And, and my husband and I are having an argument. Oh, no, not an argument. It says, made in England. Uh -huh. Okay. And, but I say it's gold, and he says it's brass. And this little spring-loaded thing, and it's in okay. perfect condition. So you think, you he thinks that it's brass, and you think that it's gold. Do you think it's gold to toned, gold plated? What do you think? I would say maybe plated, but there's no usage on the edge of it at all. Like oh, this. you said, oh, like as if it's brand new and it was ne it was probably just in the manufacturing, the factory, and then came out. Like I, no one ever used it. Yeah, yeah, because oh, yeah. it's in mint condition. Typically, these pieces are brass. I hate to agree with your husband, <laughs> <laughs> but typically they are brass. There are some that are gold plated, right? Oh. Um, and oftentimes, if something is gold plated, it'll indicate that. 
Okay. Um, your particular piece is in beautiful condition. So of course, that's going to impact the value. Value on that piece, I would say about $60. The problem, the only thing about cigarette cases is we're starting to see a lot of repurposing. It's not a problem. Repurposing of cigarette cases because folks are not smoking as much as they once did. Mm -hmm. So they're starting to think, what could I use this for instead so, you know, a lot of people will use that for little cards or other things. You know, people are, are sometimes will put post-it notes in there so they have a little place to put their notes in yeah. their car if they don't want to go on their phone. All different reasons. But it's nice to collect those. And at the right price, they're going to resell very well, too. Oh, I always yeah. want to remind you that with respect to reselling something that might be in that kind of category, tobacco, Anna, for example, try to indicate, try to resell those pieces individually. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't bunch that or lot that or group that with another tobacco type of item. I would probably sell that individually because the condition is so good. Thanks so much. Nice to see you. My friends from Canada. So nice. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm the PhD antiques appraiser. I have three degrees in art and antiques history. How about that? And those, those academic degrees are going to help you to find those valuable pieces, and of course, make a lot of money. And I don't want you to forget, a lot of people say, why does she have to keep saying that she's a PhD and teacher appraiser? Because you're comparing me to people who don't have this background. That's why I keep saying it. And also, I want you to know that all of these objects that I've had the good fortune to meet all people all around the world and see their stuff and evaluate their stuff, because of that, I've been able to, of course, share this information with all of you. I hope you're having so much fun. I hope you're having fun shopping, estate sales, and all kinds of places. Group trip, group trip to Italy. Yay, let's go. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's go everywhere. We want to see all of it. Marco sounds like he'd be a good tour guide, too. Marco and I will be your tour guides. We'll have a great time. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for your patience. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. How are you? Good. I'm fine. Thank you. So tell me, what's your name and where are you calling from? Um, my name is Moria, and Moria. I'm calling from Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho? Wow! Yeah. yeah. So what's it like <laughs> in Boise today? Uh, rainy and kind of cold. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, what's behind you? Know. What's behind you? Where are we? <laughs> oh, I'm in my craft room. <laughs> oh, your craft room. Let's see. What kind of crafts are you making? So you're creating. I see the big sign to create. It kind yeah. of looked like on the le on the right hand side. Well, my right, your left. It kind of looked over there like we were we were somewhere. So you've got a pretty neat craft room. You've oh. got a lot of stuff. Everything's all all organized. Your pegboard is very organized. Well, thank you for calling it stuff. <laughs> my husband calls it, you know, other stuff. <laughs> Was well, it your craft room or his? It would be mine. <laughs> well, there you go. Then he doesn't need to be there making any kind of commentary, does he? <laughs> there you go. Um, well, so I think anyway, it's really what have we got on A frame. You've got a frame. Um, let me try to get it. Do you want me to evaluate just the frame or do you want me to evaluate? Oh, I just pulled my earring out. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> Oh, you ever do that? that? Good. You pull on your hoop earring and wow, your whole earlobe comes with you? <laughs> okay. Yeah. As long as I'm not bleeding. Am I bleeding over here? No. All right. <laughs> in one piece. So not the piece in the frame, just the frame, right? No, my mother made the piece in the frame. <laughs> I so, like the uh, frame. Was it your grandmother's frame? Early yes. 1900s? Um, yes, probably. Yeah, yeah. Your frame is from the early 1900s. Annapolis remembers. Thank you very much for remembering our channel. Um, that particular piece is, of course, wood, and then it's composition matter, right? That's molded out of compost, and then it is all um, gold leaf. So that's not gilded, the paint. That is actually gold leaf. And that style is very typical of the early arts and crafts movement. So early years of the 20th century, prior to 1915, Value on that frame, is that frame 20 by 24, or 16 by 20? Um, You're I in the craft room, don't you have a door over there? Come on. I do, actually. <laughs> You're cute. I'm gonna set you down, hold on, sorry. Okay, be careful. Um, actually, this says 29. Oh. 
by 25. Wow, nice. Okay, the standard sizes are usually 25 by 30, 24 by 30. So that particular piece was intended for a photograph. And the reason for that, because there's a standard size of the site size, that's the inside of the frame. You measure the outside of the frame. Value on your frame, about $300. That's beautiful. Beautiful. The frames can have value. There are certain there are certain frame dealers who only deal in frames. They don't even have anything in the frames. It's just you want to get the right frame. That piece is definitely a museum quality frame. Beautiful. So enjoy and enjoy the piece your mom made for it too. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Who's next? All the guests are lining up. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. What's your first name? Tiffany from Missouri. Hi, Tiff Hi Tiffany. How are things in Missouri? They're rainy. <laughs> rainy. It's rainy a lot of places today, I guess. Yeah. So how can I help you? Well, I have this. I know it's hard to see, but I got it at, at an estate sale. Darn it. I've got some so reflection. It looks like I'm looking at a piece of American art um, of the 1930s or 40s, and it looks like it's a print of people playing marbles. Well, yes? there's marbles. It says knuckle down, jumping jack, and then there is towing the prize. And I can't find any signature on it. I got it this way at, a, at an estate sale at a doctor's house. I need you to take one step back. Can you take one step back? There you go. Now pull the piece up. Now turn it around. Yeah, 1930s American painters in the tradition of Norman Rockwell. Rockwell's gonna be after these guys. These are um, lithograph prints. They're done of dime a dozen, a lot of them out there. I would say value on each print about $15. Value on the frame, another 25. So 15, 30, 45. 65, I don't know, 65, 70 bucks for that whole deal. Yeah, I looked at, at it with my loop. And the yes. only reason I questioned it is because I did, don't see dots. I see lines. Okay, let's talk about this. I've talked about this on other videos. Mm -hmm. Certain types of lithographs, certain types of lithographs show a line or a stroke. You may also be looking at an engraving or an etching, and you're looking for a mechanical print, which is the dots. Okay. Mm -hmm. Using the loop will help you and watch that video because I've explained that a couple of different times. I'll Thanks for being with me. Thank you. Sure. So certain prints are going to be mass produced, large numbers, a lot of them out there, and they're going to be, in fact, relatively low value. When you put them together, then you start to multiply how many have you got and how much are they. Um, the frame was pretty nice, too. Carla, thank you very much for the super chat and the super sticker. Thank you all for that. It helps the channel, of course, and it helps us to continue to give you this really upscale, high quality education so you can use it to your benefit. That's what I hope you're all doing. And I'm hearing it over and over again. So thanks for that. Questions, keep them coming. And I've got guests here. I'm Dr. Lori. This is, of course, Ask Dr. Lori Live. We do this on Saturdays. Thanks for being with me. Hi. Hi, what's your first name? Where are you calling from? I'm Lisa from St. Charles, Missouri. I know St. Charles, Charles very well. well. Been there many, been there times. many times. Yeah, it's been here about 30 yeah. years. Yeah. You've been there 30, I, years. 30 years. How about, How about Chesterfield? Chesterfield? Annie, Annie Guns. Guns. I could use I could a piece of meatloaf from oh, Annie Guns, Guns restaurant. restaurant. They're wonderful. <laughs> they are wonderful. They are wonderful. <laughs> it's a good place. <laughs> so, so, what have you got? Have this piece of pottery. It is marked um, with a crown. It's got TK, Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And it's yep. kind of like a pearl finish. It's called it's luster. luster. It's called it's pearl, pearl luster. luster. Can you turn, you turn off whatever, whatever it is that's making, that's me, making echo? me echo? <laughs> I guess you've I guess got you've, you've got, got me on, which, on is which is good, good but, but you know, you know, it's gonna get, annoying, gonna get annoying, for annoying for people who are watching if I'm echoing. Oh, that's just the cell phone. That's just the way it is. Okay. So you've got pearl luster and then it's hand painted, made in Czechoslovakia. It's a powder jar. You could use it for trinkets, but usually it's a powder jar and used for, of course, pressed powder. Dates to the early years of the 20th century to about 1940, just prior. Of course, Czechoslovakia has to be after 1914 because of the history, right? After, of course, World War I, 14, 1914, 1918. And then, of course, 
you're going to see it up into the middle part of the 1930s. So, you know, it's a it's basically a powder box between the wars, if you will, between World War One and World War Two. Value on that piece, yeah, I would say it's about six inches in diameter. Is that true? About that. So um, hand painted value on that piece, about $40. I like the pearl luster. I like the pearl luster very well. Of course, it's ceramic with pearl luster. That's what gives it that kind of pearlescence kind of look, the look like pearls. And you'll see that a lot. You'll also see it on teapots. I appraised one, I appraised one like that um, earlier this week on one of the television shows too, um, doing all of that. So thank you very much for the super chat and the super sticker. I appreciate that too, because you're helping to support the channel. You're helping me to make more videos that will help you. If you don't do it, then we're going to have to, you know, curtail, of course, as many videos as I do. We do a lot. And of course, there's a lot of people behind the scenes or yeah. helping. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. My name is Susan. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Hi, Susan. Uh, let, me, let me find center here. My husband's helping me out. He's um, doing a good job. He's helping. That's good. Yes, I like he Memphis. Is. Memphis is fun. Oh, Memphis it is. is. We have a lot of fun here. I'm, yeah. Well, doggone it, baby. Yeah, Memphis is not fun. fun. Hang on. I'm having technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. I'm sorry. Memphis. I know you need that. All there right. we go. I All found right. this in a bag at. Oops, that doesn't do any good. In a bag, I don't know how to make that all oh, pretty. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But anyway, okay. um, can you put it a little closer to the camera? Yes, ma'am. There you go. I sure can. I, like I only have one earring. Is the frustrating part? No, that's not frustrating. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about okay. one earring. People wear one earring. You could do a lot with one earring. Don't worry about that. Okay. Oh, I don't well, like I earrings. won't worry now, about it then. Now you don't have the there. set. Okay, you don't have the set. But there are people who want one earring. There are jewelry designers who are going to take that one earring and they're going to repurpose it. There are folks who say, "I'm going to wear one earring. I don't care. I think there's going to be a big trend in one different earrings coming Doing, soon." Okay. Now, first of all. Your piece, you know, your piece, of course, relates to, of course, that tradition in the 1950s of those nice hanging lavalier pieces. I think right. your piece might even be a little earlier than that, the 1940s or so. Value on that piece. Does it hit around here? Just about yes, here? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It does. So it's actually around 23 and a yeah. quarter inches. I was going to say that's 24 inches right yeah. about here. This is about 20. This is 18. And then, you know, if you're my neck, it's 16 is right up to your neck. But right, value right. on that piece is going to be just about $65. The costume jewelry piece is particularly from the middle part of the 20th century, really, really valuable. And that's based on actual sales records. How'd you get it? I got it in a, um, Goodwill bag. a Goodwill bag. I actually paid $50 for the bag and had over over 100 pieces in it. Oh, now, 100 then, pieces for 50 your diamond, your diamond tester tested that as a diamond necklace. Okay, well, you have to tell me that because I can't see those diamonds from I'm here. I'm sorry, dear. Okay. Your diamond tester, it went beep, beep, beep. And I okay, was, if, that, if that diamond tester te tested one diamond or many of them? Uh, more than one. Okay, more than one tested as the diamond. So then I, those diamonds are pave diamonds, very okay. small diamonds, right? right so you're right. probably looking not, of course, at the 65 range. Is the class marked? You know, it's not. I, mm. I've tried and tried to look mm. for a mark, but of course, I'm some sort of noob too. Now, to me, the gold on the back does look like white gold. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My hand. Well, you got to have a mark. You got to have a mark. Yep. For the okay. white and gold. Oh, I baby, don't, don't that, do that. <laughs> to me, I, you have to have a mark for the white gold. But uh, if it is indeed white gold, if they are pave diamonds and the tester indicated that they're pave diamonds, then you're probably looking at then you're probably looking at about two hundred and seventy five dollars. Oh, okay. If they're not, and I want you to test them, test every one of them. Okay. I know it's it, it's tedious. I want you to test all of them. Then you're back down to the lower number. About okay. All right. Thank, well, thank you, so you so much. much. Bye -bye. Nice to see you. Yes, ma'am. So, again, if you tested it, that's great. And I want her to use the diamond tester. And for those of you who got the diamond tester and you need to know how to use it, it's very simple. There's directions in it. Um, so, of course, read through those directions and make sure you've calibrated that properly. So I'm happy to give those two numbers. And the reason for that is just in case, you know, she wants to go back and double check her calibration. So. All right. This is Dr. Lori. I'm asked. This is Ask Dr. Lori live. It's nice to be with all of you. So, do we have other guests for us? Let's see if we've got other guests. 
Remember, my next, of course, um, video is coming up. And the next video coming up, oh, guests are coming. The next video is coming up. And of course, that's going to be tomorrow. And I'm going to go shopping. I'm going shopping. I know you all want to thrift with Dr. Lori. And I'm going to have you thrifting with me so you can learn a little bit about all different pieces. See what we went shopping for at the Silver Penny. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. We'll see you next time.